Hello, this is Elmira 2 from Neutral Labs. It's a four-voice experimental semi-modular synthesizer that's geared towards drones and gritty ambient soundscapes. It's available as a Eurorack module that you can mount in a standard case if you've got 42 HP to spare, or you can get this desktop version where it's pre-installed in an enclosure which lets you use it as a standalone synth powered by USB. It's also available as a DIY kit if you'd like to build it yourself. Elmira 2 is great for dark, gnarly drones. As well as gently rhythmic ambient jams. But I've also been using it as a dub techno chord generator. and it can be the beating, screaming heart of a full-on techno track. Neutral Labs very kindly sent this unit over a few weeks back for me to check out, and I've had a lot of fun coming up with these patches. I've cooked up some things here that I probably wouldn't have landed on any other way, which is always a good thing. The architecture of Elmira 2 is really interesting and it's quite different from any other synth I've used, although admittedly I've never used the Soma Lyra 8, which is obviously a big influence. So if you're already familiar with Elmira 2 and just want to check out the patches, then do feel free to skip ahead, but first I'm going to give you a quick overview of the controls and how it works. So Elmira 2 basically consists of four identical digital wavetable oscillators which are mixed together through a filter, through a lo-fi delay with optional reverb added, and then through this ouch circuit, which is a kind of combination analog distortion wave folder and filter. Um, you can change the character of this ouch circuit with these little cards which slot in here as well. You get four with the unit. They're called Bunny, Kitty, Birdie and Doggy, and they all have slightly different characteristics for that distortion. On the left we've got the main audio output at the top left and an audio input there which comes in just before the ouch circuit in the signal flow. Um, there's an external clock input where you can tap tempo in there as well um, and then you can sync things like the LFOs um, to that clock and it will also drive the sequencer. There's a couple of buttons down the bottom there. Super basic sequencer, it just lets you record some note pitches and I'll explain that in one of the patches. Um, there's a mod P button here. This pages between the various different modulation parameters that are available via the mod P knob on each voice. I'll come onto those in a minute. And then this button lets you engage or disengage the quantizer effectively for the tuning knobs to constrain it to semitones or whatever microtonal tuning system you've selected, which I'll come onto in a sec. Um, over on the right, we've got a couple of LFOs. The first one's just a, a really basic sine wave. The second one has an adjustable wave shape. Uh, then we've got a two-channel mixer and a two-channel molt with attenuators on those outputs. So you could take one of those LFOs, send it to two destinations and adjust the amount. Um, each of the four voices has a touchpad to trigger it. That touchpad triggers an envelope and the envelope times are set by the single env knob here. Um, I've got the shortest attack and decay at the moment. If you turn that up a bit, you'll hear... much slower delay time and it can get pretty long um, and you can also take that envelope shape output from the or the CV of that envelope rather from the env output on each channel if you want to use that to drive other things in your patch. The PG button or page button that cycles between four pages of wavetables and then the wave uh, knob above it and CV input lets you choose the wave within that table. Um, let me just have a little tap through this voice. So the wave knob, these are the waves in this table from a kind of saw through to a kind of square. Next page. Next page. And fourth page. So you've got a, quite a good variety of different waveforms available there. Um, mod P control, that controls the amount of whatever modulation program you've set using the mod P button over here. These are all colour coded. Uh, the red is a detune, which kind of adds into the copy of the oscillator, gets quite fat. 
green is a sub oscillator which brings in another copy at one or two octaves below mint is a chord mode Purple's a sort of wave shaper. So you get even gnarlier. And then blue is a saturator. Which kind of squares off the waves. Cyan is a bit mangler. Which does some interesting stuff to that digital waveform. And yellow is sample rate reduction. White uh, cross fades between the waveform and white noise. And then finally, pink is a low pass filter. Just a simple non resonant one. And that's probably the easiest way to, if you wanted to to mix the levels of these things independently, because there's no mixer otherwise, they're all just mixed together uh, and saturated into the mix. But if you want to control the individual levels, the low pass filter is not a bad bet. And there's also a high pass finally, in the lime mode, which can be a nice way to bring voices in and out as well. But I'm just going to leave it on the red mode. Um, and yeah, there are various other settings available if you hold mod P and then enter a four digit or three digit code using the PG buttons, one, two, three, four, you can adjust stuff like the amount of mix saturation, whether there's a reverb added to the delay effect, the microtonal tuning system you wanna use, as well as 12 EDO, you can also use seven, nine, 15 or 17 if you're into microtonal stuff. Um, you can choose whether the LFO is a sync to the clock. You can change the octave setting for each voice. You can change the filter type from uh, state variable low pass to band pass, high pass, ladder, a few other types as well. Um, I won't go into all those settings. Um, I'll use some of them in some of the individual patches, but there are plenty of other videos out there and you can check the manual for more details. Let's just get something droning just to show you the effect of the delay and the ouch circuit and the filter um, on a basic kind of four note stack. And you can hear how massive it sounds. I'm just gonna turn the mix saturation to soft. Um, first of all though, which is mod P and then one, two, two. <laughs> Just when I bring all four of these voices in, it'll make it a little bit less overwhelming and a bit easier to hear some of the effects of the filter and the ouch circuit. So you can press and hold the PG button to set each voice droning indefinitely. You need to hold it for a couple of seconds. So let's bring these in. I'm just going to tune them. Let's just play with the wavetables to get a little bit of... And then this is the standard state variable low pass filter. It's got quite a nice sound. Resonance doesn't quite get into self-oscillation, but it gets... a nice kind of screech. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of delay. If I tweak that cut off you'll hear it. This can get quite gnarly quite quickly especially with lower times. Starts to break up as the feedback goes up. Let's take that delay off. Let's so bring in some of that detuning from the red mod P mode as well, get it even warmer and fatter. Let's bring the resonance down and then the ouch circuit. As you increase bite, 
distortion arrives. And gets quite aggressive quite quickly. Choke control. Let's you kind of rein that in a bit. And filter some of it off. into this kind of screaming distorted territory. Pretty easily. So that's the basics. Let's get into some patches and see what it can do. Okay, in this patch, I'm gonna look at using a little bit of rhythmic movement rather than static drones. And I'm gonna use a clock divider to give me some regular rhythmic triggers to hit the gate inputs on each of the four voices. Um, let's just patch up. I've got Pamela's new workout going into wrong divisions here in the palette case. And if I take a divide by two into the first voice gate input, with a short envelope, we just get this kind of pulsing. Let's get the divide three into the next voice. Let's get a divide five into the third one. So we've got the filter wide open. Divide seven into the fourth. And I've kind of just tuned these with chromatic on. No distortion, no delay. I've had a bit of reverb. Add a little bit of the internal delay effect as well, just a smidge because it gets quite violent. And we can just slow the envelope slightly on the low note. Let's try taking this LFO, nice slow LFO from the top right, into the sort of molten attenuator. And let's use that to modulate the wave voices three and four. Let's filter this down a bit and add some resonance. Let's try tuning the fourth voice slightly differently. Take the other LFO, and I've got the Mod P program on this one set to the noise effect. So this will basically let me fade in, or fade across to noise rather. So let's go into the voice three modulation input. Turn this up slightly. Which just gives us a slightly little bit of noisy percussion kind of effect when that note hits. saturation to soft which I think gives quite a nice tone in this particular patch as the resonance goes up it gets a bit growlier
Now, Elmira 2 obviously excels at kind of long, sustained drone ambient kind of sounds, but I want to try using it for some dub techno kind of sounds by running it through an external LPG and hitting that with an envelope for some more kind of rhythmic stabby chords. I'm going to use the chord mode for Mod P, uh, which lets you basically dial in a particular chord shape. And I'm just going to use voice one, uh, which sounds like this at the moment. And if I dial up Mod P, there's a range of different chord shapes. Stick with a minor triad like that. Obviously the internal VCA isn't particularly snappy, so let's try running that through. Let's get it droning. And let's try running it through this Nikia Circuits LPG up here. And hitting that with an envelope from Pip Slope. And I'm just going to use a little sequence in the BeatStep Pro. I'm going to control the, the pitch as well with the pitch CV into the tune input. But I'm actually going to stick with this kind of pitch for most of the pattern. I'm just going to go down on that last step in the second half. So we get this nice kind of classic metallic dub techno kind of chord. Let's add some delay from Sarajevo for this. And let's bring in a kick drum. The other taps of Sarajevo panned in stereo here as well. They might also notice I've got a slow, slightly attenuated LFO patched into the wave input on this voice as well, just to kind of gradually morph across the wavetable to give it a bit more variety. Let's just bring the cutoff frequency down slightly as well. And the envelope decay time. to open that up. I'm just going to bring in some of that bite in the ouch section, a bit of distortion. that good nice gnarly dove techno chords and it's missing a bit of sub bass so let's bring that in too just using the battering ram from shack map you probably won't hear that unless you're on headphones or very nice speakers but there's a nice sub bass there as well So the sequencer in Elmira 2 is incredibly basic. It basically just lets you define a series of note pitches using the tuning knob, uh, and then it'll play back those pitches in order at a speed determined by the either the tap tempo, which you can tap in with a button there, or you can feed in an external clock. Um, let's show you what I mean. Uh, by default, it'll just work on voice one. You can set it to record on other channels as well, and you can make them different lengths, which is quite interesting. But for this patch, let's keep it simple and just record a kind of bass part on channel one. So if I get channel one droning, and we go into record mode by just pressing record, and now we just choose our first pitch, which I'm gonna use this one, press record again to store that, and then adjust the pitch, press record again to store the next step, Now 
because we're droning, we're hearing this effect, but the sequencer itself doesn't put out any gate, so if I stop it droning, we can't hear that sequence anymore. But what we can do is synchronize one of the LFOs to the master clock. I've done the button combination for that already on LFO2, uh, and I've got the wave set fully anti-clockwise and the frequency set fully clockwise, which means it's going to do a one times or the same speed as the, the main clock, and it's kind of a decay envelope shape or a falling saw. So we could use that output, for example, to go into the gate input of that channel. And then it'll be controlled by the envelope here. I'm actually going to transpose that down an octave as well. I had transposed it up, but if I use the combination 2, 3, 1, it's a bit bassier. So that's one way to kind of articulate it. Another way is to drone it. And you could use that same CV to modulate the wave shape, say. Which gives the notes a bit of definition. Let's just roll with this for a minute. I'll add some reverb. And I've tuned these top three voices like this. synth bass line almost. What's interesting then is all the voices are going through that filter. We can speed up that envelope to double speed as well. Okay, to finish off today, I want to look at using Elmira 2 to create a kind of big, distorted, heavy background chord texture, which I can sidechain heavily to a techno kick drum. Um, I've got the four notes set up like this. And I've got some slow LFOs um, going to the mod parameter on three and four, which is acting as a low pass filter. Just so those notes are gonna sweep slightly and then I've also got one going to the main filter cut off as well so the whole thing is going to have a bit of a filter sweep going on At the moment I've got the distortion off but let's just get these four notes droning and I'm running the output of the Elmira into the Danny Sound Dynamics module over here which is a compressor, EQ, sub bass generator, drive 
exciter, general all-round kind of audio dirtier upper. And I'm gonna use the kick drum from Shackmat's battering ram. I'm gonna use that into the sidechain input uh, on the compressor. Let's just get a bit of sub bass in here as well, get it really big. Let's increase the resonance slightly for now on here. And let's bring in a kick drum. And you can hear that side chaining effect. I've got it deliberately quite exaggerated. I'll just ease up ever so slightly. And now let's, um, we can kind of add a bit more drive and EQ at this end. The exciter brings up a lot of that kind of snarly treble. If I bring up the bite here, birdie card plugged in as well which gives it this nice kind of raspy high end let's add some more drums to this i'm going to run that sent through some sarajevo delay as well go i'm gonna leave it there um hope you've got some patch ideas for this really fun little box of tricks not just for droney ambient but also really good in a techno context as well if you've enjoyed the video leave a like and a subscribe and tell your friends leave a comment uh, i'll be back soon see you next time